everyone and welcome to our November Artist Talks. Right here is Min Inghauser in our front gallery this month. Min, welcome. Thanks Thank for coming you. here. Thank you. We just have a couple questions for you. Okay. Um, do you find yourself focusing on similar subject matters as you did in your childhood when you first began photography? Uh, probably not. I took a lot of pictures of my dog <laughs> when I was a kid. But, you know, I was always sort of drawn to nature. But, you know, when you're a kid, you just sort of you have no real clue what you're doing. So you shoot everything around you. So, you know, it took a while before I figured out where I needed to be, which was landscape. Mm -hmm. um, so childhood, no, when I was getting into college, it was I was still doing sort of, it, it, trying to be edgy and still not quite finding myself. And it wasn't until I actually figured out that the landscape was my thing mm -hmm. that I started to. And when was that? Probably well after college, um, probably about 15 years ago, 20 years ago, yeah. And it started with desert scapes like this? No, or? not at all. Um, mostly local places, you know, nature in general. And, you know, I, I sort of get pigeonholed into this landscape type, but I don't really consider myself necessarily a landscape shooter. Um, it's more just nature, details, those kinds of things. It just happens to be that's where I have to go to get those things. <laughs> And, um, and so, you know, locally, within Virginia, West Virginia, wherever I would travel, um, and all across the country, but the, the desert itself, the Anza Regular Desert, a friend of mine lives out there now, so I went out to visit and just became this obsession over the last two years to photograph there because it's so different than anything you'll find on this coast. Mm -hmm. okay. the show? Um, well, this show is a small sample of actually what I have, and what I tried to do, what I tried to put together was a little bit of everything you would find there. Um, sort of broad, broad landscapes, details, textures, some of the inhabitants being the rocks and the plants. Um, but I've been doing this work for about two years, and so it's my most recent work, and it's probably the most comprehensive of one particular area that I've ever done because I tend to travel around a lot. I've got a lot of stuff in the Appalachians, but it's like here and there and everywhere. But this is one valley in California, the Anza Rima Valley. And so it, it it's interesting. It's a little different in that sense for me that I've been able to go out there a number of times, sort of discover new things every time, go back to old places and see the how the light changes. And it just seemed like this, you know, it's like you don't see these on the East Coast. So, so it's sort of, ins it's an inspiration to bring this to, to us East Coasters, this kind of landscape. Um, and because it's just a joy to be out there. So what is it specifically about the Anza Borrego Desert that keeps drawing you back? Well, I don't think I can be real specific. I can tell you some of the things that draw me back. Um, it's, it, the solitude out there is great because I can be out there every day shooting for two weeks and never see another person out there. And and so so that's nice. You know, it's it's not it's vast, so so there there are other people out there, we just don't necessarily run into them. Mm -hmm. Um a lot of the places that we've been out there take some effort to get to because you're driving up desert washes, four wheel drive is the only way you're gonna get out there. So so there's more effort involved. But as an East Coast girl, the the way the valley is laid out, and the vastness of it, and the openness of it, like you can be on one side of the Rego Valley, look all the way over, and see the wash that you were in yesterday. There's this little brown ribbon across, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you can't do that in Virginia, because you've got hollows, and you've got, and yeah. it's nothing against Virginia, it's just, <laughs> it took me a long time to, to figure out what it was that was just fascinating about out there, mm -hmm. and that's part of it. Um, and I think the other part of it is because it's not it's not that visited. It's still it's still so pristine in a lot of ways. It's endangered by invasive plants, and you know people do things out there they shouldn't do. Um, but in general, it, it's it still has such a wilderness wildness to it that you know it's hard to find a lot of places. Yeah. Um, you say that I quote. Photographs are the instruments through which you discover and uncover the truth, unquote. What about photography enables you to discover the truth? Is it the only way to uncover the truth in your mind? It, 
in my mind, yeah, for me specifically, probably, um, you know, it's it's this visual truth, and of course, I, you know, of course, I'm a visual person, obviously. And I feel like you know, people say, oh, everything I learned, I learned in kindergarten. But I feel like everything I've learned, I've learned by taking pictures and then spending these hours looking at them and editing them. And I think because they're pictures of natural things, and because my desire is to show people how there's a relationship between everything in, in an area and between us and, and this connectedness that there's a truth that comes out. And maybe I'm the only one that sees it, but, I, but I'm striving to make other people sort of aware so that we, we have more of a reverence for mm -hmm. the natural. You know, not just respect, but an actual reverence because it's, it, we mimic it and it mimics us and then everything in there mimics each other and it's just, it's a fascinating thing to find. Um, and what project do you have in mind next? Well, I'm not done with this. I'm not done with Jan Debrego. I think I'll be doing that for a while and I'm itching to get back out there maybe in the spring. Um, and I've been out there in the spring and the fall. I think I'll pass on the summer <laughs> because it's like 120 degrees, but, but the rainy season, which is the most elusive it does rain out there, mm -hmm. and then you get flash floods. Um, I'm still trying to get, but that's a timing issue. So I do still want to do that. And, and other projects, nothing has presented itself. I do little side projects that add to other projects, mm -hmm. you know, just you know, general um, building of a body of work. Um, but I think maybe this spring I'll get back out to the right one. Or to the other ones that you take out at. Oh, great. Thanks. Thanks for listening, guys, and make sure that you check out the opening this Friday, November 4th, from 6 to 9 p.m. Thanks.